Well, site selection is the process of examining multiple options and assessing their relative advantages and disadvantages. Our monthly Eye on Economic Development segment continues uh, this week with part two of our series taking a deeper dive into site selection. And we look at how advances in data analytics are really making the site selection process more effective and uh, more efficient. I'm pleased to be joined by national site selection firm KSM Location Advisor CEO Tim Cook and President Katie Culp. And welcome, as always, hey. to the Hi, program. Uh, data analytics. I mean, it, it seems like analytics uh, per permeating everything. You see it in sports. Boards and basketball and baseball and for all the sport, everywhere analytics. How is it really changing, Katie, uh, the site selection process? It has changed so dramatically from when I entered the business 20 years ago. I mean, you used to have these 100-page RFIs that would go out to economic development organizations, and you would spend two weeks filling them out, and then consultants would get the answers and compile them, and the whole process took months. And you know, the <laughs> they earned their weight in paper. <laughs> and now, I mean, don't you think it goes by probably? within yeah. a couple, I mean, you could get it, all of that done in a, in a week, maybe. So a lot, a lot more efficient, more, more quickly, and maybe gives you a, a more apples to apples comparison when, when more, more, more up-to-date valid data. Yeah, you've got more accurate information, and there's an immediacy to it now where everybody has this information at their fingertips, not just Katie and me, but the companies themselves. Mm -hmm. And so they bring some knowledge to that decision-making process where before they really tried to outsource it to the consultants. Yeah. Talk, give us some examples, because many people out there not in the business certainly may not have no idea. Right. They hear about these big deals. They hear about the Amazons, mm -hmm. which would be a, a deal on steroids, but uh, uh, they hear about these deals but have no idea the amount of data and the kinds of things these companies want and these site selection people want. Yeah, I mean, it is incredibly complex and, and the speed of data allows us to do a very even keeled sort of look at it all. But you know, you've got, whether it's a corporate or division headquarters, a call center, a manufacturing mm -hmm. facility, they typically have a team together of you know ops people, the CFO and kind of mm -hmm. an executive team. And we pour through so much data. It, there's the basic demographic stuff, you know about workforce and what have you, but then the trends in unemployment, the trends in occupational codes and where the growth is. For example, you might look at two cities, say Indianapolis and Cincinnati, mm -hmm. and they might not look that different from one another, but when you drill down into where the labor force has the skills, they may be very, very different solutions for certain types of companies. And it, it will change based on the industry. Like if yeah. it's a mm -hmm. retailer, they are looking at such precise data on customer patterns and that mm -hmm. types of thing. They could be looking at two sites that are part of the same intersection. One site's a perfect fit and the other site doesn't work at all for whatever reason. So you get that kind of precision now just based on the data that's available. Uh, lots of change, analytics uh, among them, but some things have not changed in the site selection process, right? Yeah, the qualitative piece, I mean, at the end of the day, you have all this data, it's yeah. great. Uh, you can take a very clinical approach to it, but uh, at the end of the day, it's human beings that are making these decisions, it's not computers, and that part is always gonna be part of the process. Mm -hmm. And there's so much data available that it, you can almost get paralysis by analysis, and now, right? I, I had that down as a question. I wondered <laughs> if that, that is part of the deal now. It is, there's so much. It's like, okay, how do I make a good decision, especially for our clients whose careers are tied to the success or failure of a location? And so it's helping them sift through it and to weigh in things like employer interviews and a lot of the anecdotal stuff that informs them. Yeah, like a lot of times they'll come to Katie and say, we're really, we're overwhelmed. We don't know what decision to make. One issue that could come up is they're on a tight time frame. What is it going to be like to work through that local government to get the zoning, to mm -hmm. get the entitlements, all of that? And if that's going to take three to six months and you don't have three to six months, that could take that city off the list where otherwise they look like the perfect fit. Mm -hmm. and, and Katie, I think you mentioned uh, before we started taping uh, that, that when you look at um, uh, you know, some of the things that, that companies are looking for in an environment where the employment is so tight. Yes. You know, the, the unemployment situation at, at historic lows, that makes it challenging. Yeah, I mean, uh, the most popular locations do have pretty tight labor markets. And so what's a real estate executive, you know, for a company to do saying 3.8 versus 3.7 percent unemployment? Mm -hmm. That doesn't really tell you the whole story. There are a lot of nuances and more granular data that they need that we need to arm them with to make a good decision. As you look at all these changes and how data analytics are driving change in, in the way you do business, have, have these changes and advances plateaued, have they kind of topped out, or do you think we'll continue to see evolution and change in the site selection process? Yeah, I think uh, data is just 
going to become more readily available, and I think the expectations on what it can do to help make decisions has become greater. So I think the focus is only going to become more so. But it does seem to keep speeding up all yeah. the time, so I guess less sleep for anyone in our business. Yeah, does, <laughs> you know, from, from local economic development organizations, let's yeah. say, how does that change the dy dynamic for them? Some, especially maybe in smaller areas, uh, it's an expense. I mean, data analytics and getting that, that data has got to have an expense to it. Does it put them in a, in a challenging position? I think it is really hard for some of these smaller organizations mm -hmm. that um, a lot of times are on a, a list or cut from a list without even knowing it. Mm -hmm. And so they obviously don't have the same resources to promote some of their data that some of the larger organizations and, do. And those organizations that can provide that on a turnkey basis, mm -hmm. they're in a better position to uh, qualify to get some of those projects. Right. Yes, response speed actually has mm -hmm. sometimes Huge as much deal. to do as what they, their product is. Absolutely. Great, great behind the scenes look at uh, at the site selection process. Uh, next month in part three, we'll take a look at uh, issues like quality of space and the impact on the site selection process. We we'll look forward to uh, that. Tim Cook, Katie Culp, thanks very much. Thanks, thanks Gary. Gary. See you soon. In uh, part three next month, once again, we'll deep into, dive deeper into the softer issues like quality of space and the impact on the site selection process. That'll be next month in part three. And I'll be right back after this.